Welcome back to Cine Watch Live. I'm your host, Brad, and again we're here with Craig and Sophie. Uh, and today we are carrying on with our uh, our top 100 films. I think we are now on to 81, no, 80 to 71. Yes. That's what, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So if you haven't seen the previous two episodes, go check them out on Cine Watch Live on our YouTube channel. Uh, firstly, just a bit of news. So there are a few films that are still not delayed. So we've had a lot of news of films being delayed. Obviously, Disney released their whole slate. There are a few films not delayed that I thought we'd just mention. So Bill and Ted Stew is 2 is still for August 21st. Uh, Tenet for July 17th. So these are really the only films coming out in these months as well, guys. Like, July really only has one film. Um, It'll make a boatload of money then. Yeah, it probably will. Halloween Kills is still ready for October 16th. So all really the later ones are still ready. Uh, West Side Story, yeah, Godzilla vs. Kong, Coming to America, June. Uh, yeah, these are all still ready. Uh, you can check yeah. them out online for their full release dates. Uh, the Rogue One spin-off for Disney Plus has cast Stellan Skarsgård and Kyle Soller. Um, what do you guys think about that casting? I really can't comment, like, they're just fine actors like there's nothing it's not anything wow it's not big news that's going to make me go yeah got them. i agree yeah i need to watch this now it's kind of like okay thanks for telling us disney yeah exactly uh jj abrams has signed a contract with hbo max to make three series he's making a justice league dark series uh he's doing a shining spin-off called overlook which sort of centers around the infamous hotel in the film and a a series called duster which is about a mafia getaway driver in the 70s any comments on that again that's not really anything that's going to get me excited to get hbo max like the justice league thing is probably going to be better than anything that's kind of dceu so far so i suppose that would be good is, H- is hbo the max going to be is it is it going to be available in the uk I don't think it is, is it? I have no clue. It probably won't be. We'll probably get it on Sky because that's their counterpart. Yeah. Yeah, nothing there really sounds interesting again to me. Kind of just seems a bit like, what's the point of making a Shining spin-off? Yeah. Like, how is that going to be interesting? Uh, and they've literally just done yeah. Doctor Sleep as well, which is, you know. Yeah, exactly. I feel like there's no need for, like, more extra things to go with The Shining. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's no need, really. Um, and obviously the final piece of news, and I think we are all a bit excited about this, is Sam Raimi is officially, he himself has officially uh, confirmed he's directing Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. I, mean, I, I, am, I cannot wait for that now. Yeah. That's going to be so good. Like, Sam Raimi, the peak director, he's so good at doing horror as well. And, yeah. We've already had one of his films come up on our lists uh, last week, so... Yeah, uh, Evil Dead, I think. My thoughts on yeah. it last week, yeah. Uh, Army of Darkness, so third one of the Evil Dead films. And uh, yeah, he's just done great. I mean, he did amazing with the Spider-Man films as well. Like, even though Marvel has said this isn't going to be a straight horror horror, I think he'll make it work really well. Yeah. Yeah, no, it will be good. I'm, I'm definitely excited. Obviously, he did want to do a Doctor Strange before he even did Spider-Man. And obviously, yeah. I, I, think, I said to you guys the other day, it's like two of his best things together. It's like sort of horror elements and superhero films put together. And that is, yeah, that's brilliant news for Marvel as well. Uh, Probably something to look forward to. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, I think we should get straight into our, that's all the news we have. Uh, if you want to check out any more news, just check out our Instagram page. Uh, that's more where the news coverage comes from. Uh, in this podcast, though, we're going to get down to the 80 to 71. So, Sophie, if you want to go straight ahead with your 80. Okay, so my 80 is Wayne's World. Oh. I don't think that's on my list. I, yeah. Very iconic film. Yeah, it's not on my list, actually. They're good films. I don't know. I, I don't think I'd ever stick either one of them on my list. I think I prefer the second one as well more than the first, but still. Really? It's oh, a good okay. film. Yeah. I don't know what it is about number two that I always was more interested in, but just was more interesting to me. 
There's obviously the, I like, the iconic yeah, scene. Yeah, there's in the iconic car. moments in it. Yeah, yeah. as you were going to say, iconic moments of this film. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I don't, I don't, yeah, I mean, I mean, personally, for me, it doesn't really, I don't know, it was one of those films that I just watched. Like, it wasn't even one of those films, like, I know I talked a lot about feel-good films. For me, it wasn't that. It wasn't not a feel-good film, but it wasn't directly a, let's sit down and watch Wayne's World, like, I, I, I've seen it once, I'm probably not going to again, sort of thing. No, I get what you mean, that's probably the same with me, I probably, like, if it was on TV and I had nothing else to watch, I'd probably watch yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't actively seek it out to watch again. Yeah. Opinion. Yeah, I agree. But it was still good when I watched it. If there was a sequel, would you get excited? Like, if there was a, a sequel to the second one? Um, I wouldn't get overly excited, but I'd watch it, because... Yeah, I'd watch yeah, it, because I enjoyed it, them. But I wouldn't be excited. Yeah, yeah. It'd be the same, it'd be like... Yeah. I wouldn't be like, oh my god, they're doing the third one. It's yeah, yeah. Like, yeah but I'd be like Bill and Ted, yeah, like, it wasn't, it wasn't... It's nice yeah. that it's coming, but it's not... You know, it's not going to break box office records. No. Yeah. Okay. Um, my number eighty is Attack the Block, which I don't know whether either of you have seen. Um, I've, not. I've seen it. It's great. I I really like it. It's uh, like a horror comedy. British set film. In, yeah, British film set in a tower block in London, um, and it's got John Boyega from Star Wars before he was famous. Uh, and yeah, it's about these aliens who kind of crash onto Earth, and they kind of hunt these people in a tower block. And it's kind of—it's not really necessarily really scary, but it is—it's got horror elements into it in it definitely. And it's just about them trying to stop this alien invasion happening. Yeah, I personally really enjoyed it. Um, obviously, like you said, John Boyega way before Star Wars, and uh, I don't think there's any standout performances, but. It's not one of those films that needs that. It's just one of those comedies that really you can yeah, just... Yeah, there's in, no... You know, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no real standout performances, but that's because everyone's performance is really good. It's not like you can't pinpoint one who's really good or one who's really bad. Like, everyone is just doing good yeah. across and, the board. Uh, Jodie like, Whittaker in it. Is, yeah. is it Jodie Whittaker as well? Jody... Yeah, yeah, and uh, Nick Frost. Yeah, they're both in it as well. Yeah. Um, My... 80 is Avatar. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh. Um, it's that's quite low on the list, to be honest. If, if we're thinking about it, this, is still quite low in the list. This is, you know, but I don't know. For me, it doesn't get higher because I was young when I watched it, for one. Uh, so maybe I didn't have my full focus to it at the time, but it was still sort of stayed in my mind as one of my favourites but also because uh, I just genuinely think I have seen far better films than Avatar and I don't know really why it got the reception I believe in my personal opinion it got the reception it got because it was hyped up for like years about the new technology and that's why um, I, I certainly remember when I was younger um, how it was really hyped up like we've spent 15 years doing this technology to make this one film so I don't know if that's why but yeah for me that's why it gets there They've got like another five of those lined up. Yeah. That's Disney. Before we're going to see them. Yeah. <laughs> I never liked it. I, 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 I remember watching it at cinema and finding it quite enjoyable when I watched it. But watching it again, more when I'm older, it's kind of got a really crap plot and a lot of the acting is pretty bad. But the technology in it is phenomenal. I mean, it still stands up now as still looking incredible. And this film came out, what, like 10 years ago? 2009, so like, yeah, 11 years 2009, ago. 2009, yeah, so, so, and for a film like that, with the technology, I mean, I'm sure there was a massive budget behind it, but still, a film like that, still looking great now, like, you could still put it up against new blockbusters and new special effect films that came out this year, like, well, not this year, but like last year, like Endgame. They, they still look on par with each other. It's not really like you can pinpoint which one came out 10 years earlier. So yeah, technology within yeah. Avatar is impressive. Yeah. That sort of led the way as well, I think, for the MCU films, in a way. Yeah. You know, um, that whole moment in Infinity War, or Endgame, when like the whole superhero people come through, you know, without the technology that Avatar showed the world, maybe that couldn't have been possible. Um, 
So my number seventy nine is Twelve Years a Slave. Ooh. Ooh. Interesting. I um haven't seen yeah. it yet. You haven't seen it. No, I oh. sorry to interrupt. Sorry, I was just gonna say that I was really like young when it came out. Well, I wasn't really young, but like I I was I remember seeing it with my family, but like. It was that time when I didn't really focus and like, so I have seen it, but it was such a long film I remember as well, I think, that I probably fell asleep when I was watching it. Not because it was bad or anything, but just because... Very emotional as a film. Yeah. Yeah. I heard some really bad things about it. Like there was, I can't remember where I saw it, but there was something about, it might have been in our film class or something, about how it was like Brad Pitt was like really highly... Uh, advertised as like the the main actor, and that was still wrong because obviously he wasn't. I don't know if that was in this country. I think that was in a different country, in like a foreign country. But obviously, that was still wrong just because it was the first film, obviously to, um, and it's still quite a recent film, which is weird that it was the first film to or one of the first to uh, show the protagonist as a black slave. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. Yeah, but... it's it's a good film. It never made my list, and it, and it did come back to me when I was thinking about making this list. Uh, so I guess it kind of shows how I felt about it. Like, it was a good film, and I, I'm glad I watched it, and I would recommend it to others. But I would never have put it on my list. It didn't even come into my head until Sophie's just mentioned it. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Um, my 79 is super bad. I uh, love I super bad. Yeah, Sophie, have you seen super bad? Um, I don't think so. Oh, you should. It is. I. It is one of the best comedies, in my opinion. It's so funny. Like every time I watch it, I'm always in stitches. It's just hilarious. And each time I watch it, I kind of seem to get something new out of it, like a new viewing experience. Like it's never the same emotional reaction I get each time. Like I always find something different about it that I enjoy. Something about it that kind of changes my opinion of the film. It, it's always morphing in my head, but not in a bad way. Like, it's still, like, it's so funny. Just the performances are great, and the plot, and the jokes, and everything. Super worth watching. Super bad for me really is the definition of what I'm talking about feel good film. It really is that. And it's, it's, like you say, it's just, it is funny. It is um, that sort of teenage, not drama, but if you get one, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. 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 It's, and it's very similar to actually you recommended to me, Craig, Booksmart, which I just have to mention because I watched it. I loved it so much. I would have actually put it on my list. I know you said you wouldn't to me, but I would have put that on my 100 list had I not made my list, obviously, before we started the podcast. Um, but yeah, Booksmart as well, very similar to it, isn't it? Yeah, I, 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 I do really like Booksmart. I've seen it twice now. Uh, I definitely enjoyed it the second time more. Yeah. I'm not saying that I didn't enjoy it the first time. Um, but Booksmart still stay stay. Another comedy, it's very similar to Superbat, um, but it's more like the female protagonist rather than male protagonist. Yeah, nothing yeah. wrong with that. Um, but it's still that film is still so funny. Like, like that's definitely an honourable mention. Uh, but I, I would never put it on my top one hundred. I will say this of Booksmart though: the soundtrack is much better than Superbad's. Yeah, like yeah, it is, the songs yeah. in it, they're so good. And I will say this as well: actually, I think the directing and the cinematography in Booksmart is actually quite good. Like, it's quite visually appealing, whereas Superbad is kind of just a standard-looking comedy. Like, there's nothing really special about it. Just yeah. say it's probably its negatives. I'd, that, I'd say like, there's... The, the behind the scenes. Yeah. I'd, I'd say there's probably more character development, a bit more in Booksmart as well. Mm, yeah, I could see I could see that. Uh, but I, I feel like Booksmart tries to be subverting this kind of comedy and then in the final act it kind of seems to conform to expectations of what it would be if that makes any sense yeah no i get what you mean kind of it's kind of falls flat in the final act in my opinion where it kind of just becomes a stereotypical comedy rather than being a subversion like the rest of it is yeah no i get i do get what you mean um i i think you'd really enjoy them so if you're both super bad and book smart they're both brilliant yeah they're both yeah. you should use them both to watch you Both should. on Amazon Prime. Yeah, so. they're really good. Uh, my 79 is Room, which at a time, in about 2015 when it came out, was probably near my number, like in my number 10. Uh, 
but I don't know why it's moved so much. I think I've just seen a lot more films since then. This was sort of, I really sort of began to really, really take film seriously and enjoy film and, you know, notice the beauty of film in a sense, really went in about, you know, when I was in about year seven to eight. So sort of when I hit high school, I know you guys may have been earlier, but um, so Room was really one of the first films that I was, that wasn't mainstream that I was opened up to and I really enjoyed it because the performance from, this is Room by the way, not The Room, um, for anyone that gets that mixed up. This is not Tommy Wiseau, this is Brie Larson, uh, Jacob Tremblay in his, I believe, first main or key starring role, uh, which he also won the Oscar for, I believe. Did he win the Oscar for it? I, I don't think he did. Oh. I still think... He was nominated, Anne wasn't he? the youngest actor slash actress. To, yeah, he was definitely nominated. I remember him being yeah. nominated. Um, but I don't think he's the one that... Yeah. I can Google it if you want. Yeah, Google it. Have a look. I, I believe he was nominated at least. It's a brilliant film, though. Sophie, have you seen it? I haven't, but I know Brie Larson won the Oscar for her part. Yeah. Yeah, she's she's good in that. Yeah. That was my first exposure to her as well. And that was sort of before her whole Captain Marvel being famous sort of thing. A good actress, yeah. Yeah. Um, that sort of also, that film led me on to other things like Scott Pilgrim when I found out that she was in that and stuff. And, uh, yeah. Um, but, yeah, no room is... Yeah, he really wasn't good. nominated for Best Supporting Actor. He wasn't? No, he wasn't. Oh, wow. Okay. I always thought he was. He was He was worth... I think he was really worth being... Yeah, um, no, same, yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, I thought he was. I don't know what he was, would have been up against, but maybe not win, but definitely nominated, I would have said he should have been. Yeah, yeah. So, well, he was anyway. nine at the time. Wow. Yeah. I think kids achieve more than we ever have. <laughs> right, so my number seventy-eight is uh, a film, a childhood film, and um, honestly, I think I think it's a feel-good film. Uh, it's The Goonies. Oh, I love that film. Such a good film. Yeah, Fred, have you seen it? I've seen The Goonies. Yeah, um, I seen it. I saw it once again when I was young. I keep referring back to this. How when I was young, I didn't really take focus. But I saw it when I was young. Um, mainly saw like the uh the ending scene with sort of the pirate boat and everything and then i saw it again recently and i really enjoyed it classic yeah, it's, it's just a good classic film yeah mm. it's something you can stick on with the family that's sort of slightly more adult for the younger audience but it's not inappropriate in any way like yeah. you can stick it on and everyone every age group will get enjoyment out of it like there's no way someone can't find something to enjoy about that film yeah, I agree. It is, yeah, it's an 80s classic as well. Um, mm. Yeah, it's brilliant. Yeah, Josh Brolin's in it. He's one of the... Yeah. <laughs> Led him on to bigger things as well. Oh, did I not know yeah. that? Do you not know that? Um, well, speaking of Josh Brolin, my number 878 featured its Avengers Endgame. Oh. Ah. I'm so shocked yeah. that's not, like, higher up your list. Yeah, it's... Uh, I, I, I knew this would turn some heads. Um, that I've put it quite so high. Um, now, don't get me wrong. I did thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy this film. It, it is. It has the emotional satisfaction of 10 years passing of films. Like, these Marvel movies have really changed how Hollywood is in the last 10 years. Everyone's wanting to do like an extended universe connection. Every, everything's trying that. Like a lot of them are failing, but these movies have changed everything. And for 10 years, and to be able to get such a successful and satisfying conclusion, in my opinion anyway, uh, this movie, it's good, but I think out there there are a lot better films. Not necessarily saying there are better Marvel films, but I'm just saying that this one, it's good. It's really good. Don't, yeah. don't take that away from it. But... It goes up quite high because there are a lot of other films that I think are better. It is uh, very high on my list, in my top ten. Um, I'm not someone that jumps on the bandwagon, but I've just really loved it. And you can't help loving a film, obviously. Um, but, yeah, no, I agree. Um, while we're here, I feel like we should mention how Kevin Feige really does deserve 
a some sort of recognition of the Oscars, I think, for what he's yeah. done with that, you know. Um you know, he took so I on your list. I don't actually have any Marvel films on my list. Hmm. Um interesting. I feel like I should if I reevaluated the list, but I enjoy them. I just don't think that I enjoy them to the extent I enjoy the rest of these films. Do you have any honorary mentions, though, from Marvel? Endgame, definitely. Yeah. Captain America Winter Soldier? I also... I also enjoyed... Uh, I, I enjoyed Civil War, which is strange, but I really... I actually enjoyed that film. I'll, I'll say this. Um, it's not on my list, but my favourite Marvel film is Ant-Man and the Wasp. Uh, which I think might be interesting to put up people who might not like that film. It's not on my list, though. Um, so, wait, wait, wait. hold up. Different. Hold up. Your favourite Marvel film is Ant-Man and the Wasp, which isn't on your list, but a Marvel film is on your list. Yeah. So your favourite Marvel film yeah. doesn't get in your top 100 favourite films, but your not favourite Marvel film gets in your top 100 favourite films. That's found the list. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm allowed to put what I want on my list. Thank you very much. No, I I, I accept that. I'm just saying. My, my one of my not so 100 percent favorite films on here from the Marvel universe, but I do want to put on some Avengers Endgame, which isn't my favorite. Then I can do that, can't I? Cause it's my list. Yeah. So <laughs> we can do about it. You can do it, it's your list. What are you going to do about it, huh? You're not going to do anything. What I'm going to no, do is move on to mine. I'm going to I'm going to move on to mine. That's what I'm going to do. My 78 is uh, Despicable Me. I'm just going to, yeah, going to say it, Despicable oh, Me. Oh, wow. wow. The first wow. one. The first we one's really an okay film. <laughs> no, no, no. The first one's an okay film. You can't deny that. And it um... skyrocketed Illumination Entertainment. This was Illumination's <laughs> Toy Story. This, you know... You can't, you can't justify this. You've made a mistake here. It I'm was... sorry. Yeah. You put this far down as well. Like, no, it's it. You're it's, saying you prefer not, just big bull me to films like Moon. Yes, personally, wow. I just enjoyed the. Do you, is, Brad? I just enjoyed it. I can't take no. that away. I can't take that. Away. Do you know what? I've put it higher up than Room, and I don't. I'm starting to think now. Should I have done that? But um. No, you shouldn't. That's the answer. Yeah, maybe I should have put it a bit lower, but um. I'm calling you out on this one. This is a proper, you've messed up here, in my opinion. Look, it's, like, obviously, it's your choice. It's like, our choices. Like, I think my choice wasn't to put Ant-Man and the Wasp on here, even though that's my favourite Marvel film. Uh, but you should, wow, despicable me. Well, wow. on that note, let's move on to Sophie's <laughs> Sophie's 77. My 77 is um, one of the most classic, in my opinion, one of the most classic Western films, uh, Once Upon a Time in the West. Which I literally watched about three days ago or something. It is brilliant. One of my favourite westerns. It's genuinely just so good. I agree. The opening to that film, though. like It's like a whole 20 minutes of suspense. They build suspense in such a great way. It also has a really interesting editing style, I think. Yeah, no, I'd agree. And, yeah, it's... it's it is sort of your typical Western. Like when I'm looking for a Western to watch, I don't really want your typical Western. Like, sort of, No Country for Old Men is not your typical. But then, yeah. once upon a time. But then, this, you have to remember, this was the Hollywood, you know, sort of time when Westerns were that big. And they were, that is what they want, was wanted, really, from the audience. Um, but it's not a bad Western by any means. It's like a really good Western, I think, anyway. I haven't seen it. I can't comment. It's one of my uh, ones that I do regret still having not seen. It's a long so I film. I have heard really good things about it. It's a long film. Um, it's long, but it's but worth it. Can we take note as well of the sound in that film? The sound is really, really well done. Oh, definitely. Like that definitely. whole, you know, the whole harmonica, and it's like very symbolic. Like I don't know how that's not become more iconic over its time, but yeah. Okay, well, I have nothing to add to that, so I'm going to just move us swiftly on to my next one. Uh, so, 77 is Despicable Me 3. Serious? I'm, I'm kidding, oh. obviously. No, oh, my kidding. God. I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> I was like, what? No, actually, 77. Okay, 
I know what I just said about my previous one, but my this one is Avengers Infinity War. Oh. Which I think is better than Endgame yeah. as a film. As a film. As a emotional reaction and like conclusion, I think Endgame is better. But as a film, and that cliffhanger in Infinity War is, I think, so well done. Certainly, yeah. I don't know really how well they managed to get away with that. Yeah, I'd agree. Don't know, just a company that massive with like this much build up about it, and they managed to pull that off so successfully because that could have gone so wrong. Like they could have got such a negative reaction from that, but they managed to do it. Like it built so much more hype up the next film. Like people went to go see Ant Man and the Wasp and Captain Marvel, which they probably were betting would have been some of their weaker ones. Um, but people went to go see those next films because they wanted to know what was going to happen. Yeah, and and I think Infinity War is 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 a better film. In terms of pacing, in my opinion, I think Endgame is good. It's really good. But Infinity War is is how you pace a summer blockbuster film, in my opinion. It's mm. like, I mean, it, I mean, obviously it's not it's not like one of my best films, but as a summer blockbuster film goes, because I do like a summer blockbuster film, and I'm sure both of you do too. Yeah, no. Like, but they can be really crap with their pacing, or they can be really too they can be too fast. This one, okay, the runtime is kind of long. But the pacing in it doesn't make it feel like it's long or feel like it's too quick. It just does it perfectly, and it's juggling so many different characters. It, I don't know. I, I, st- I really like it, and I commend these two films. Um, I was just still prefer Ant-Man and the Wasp, but I haven't put it on here just because they haven't had as much of an impact. Like I find it more enjoyable, Ant-Man and the Wasp, as like my favourite film. Yeah. And jokes are funnier, but like they're not as good and well-made and stuff and have as much good background as Infinity War and Endgame have like uh, how they affected everything like both of them both came out before kind of start of Summer Blockbusters and I still talked about like their people's favourite Summer Blockbusters even though they kind of came out just before Summer Blockbusters season comes to start so to come out quite so early and still be people's favourite like at the end and people still be talking about them both now it's do you think, in terms of filmmaking, they deserved an Oscar nomination, especially over no. Black Panther? Over Black Panther, yes. Um, I don't think Infinity War did. I think maybe Endgame could have been nominated for an Oscar just to... A bit like having nominated Lord of the Rings for Oscars, because of just the grand scale. We're going to give you a nod for just what you've done. Yeah, no, I agree. Not necessarily make you win. Like, I don't think they should have won, but kind of just as a nod for what you've done to Hollywood and cinema in the last 10 years and kind of the background. And, and also, I, I also not even like just... And the script and all of it is good. Yeah, not even itself, like... Itself, it's not like it'd be a shit film to nominate. Not even just that. Like, it's, in a way, changed people's lives. Like, those heroes have become synonymous with little kids. And like, all yeah, you see, as well, is like, with kids in hospitals, you see, like, people coming in as Spider-Man. It's like, Marvel did that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like really, yeah, it has made a huge impact on the world. I agree with you about the impact. Um, My 77 is also a Marvel film, but from the Fox side of things, which I guess is now the Disney side, um, it's Logan. The final oh. film for Patrick Stewart and uh, Hugh Jackman as their respective characters, uh, Wolverine and Professor X. And... Uh, I went into this not because I wasn't really a massive fan of the X Men films. You know they're fun, but I was never like, like I love the MCU, but I was never like I love the X Men films. Um, but I went into this like yeah whatever. But then I really loved it. It was so different to the X Men films, and it was so, it felt like a drama. It felt like an Oscar nominated film. Um, well, it got nominated. Yeah, it got nominated for best original screenplay. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, there you go. It felt like a it felt like a standalone film. Like you could have put that on without any background, and obviously the background did need to be there because that's what created the emotional impact. But it felt to me like a a brilliant film. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Very well acted. I think that was probably their best performances as of as each superhero. Um, yeah. No. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Um, and obviously the climax also very well done i think personally pacing 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 was all right in that i think not 
the best pacing. For me, I found it quite slow, which is probably why it's so low down on my list. Um, but it does get <coughs> fast at some points. Do you not think that the pacing works for this film, though? Like, not every film needs to have a quick, quick pace. Like, this film is kind of like a retrospective of Wolverine, and this is his final... Yeah, well, no, I mean, that, that is true, it's yeah. It's like his final film. It, it doesn't need to be this quick, action-packed film like the other X-Men films. It's kind of trying to be its own thing. And with the script that it is, I, th- I think the pacing person works well. No, I do agree it's got a slow pace. It, it, I, is, I, it I, feels like a slow film. I think it was but so... I don't think the pacing's a bad thing in this situation. No, I agree with you, but I just think it was so different because it was a superhero film and obviously we hadn't seen a lot of slow-paced superhero films. But no, I agree with you. It was perfectly... I think it's a great film. Like I, just, yeah. But for that, for for the time that I saw it, and you know, there was film. What was it? Two thousand sixteen. It came out or fifteen, something like that. Uh, Seventeen, yeah, maybe. Like that. So right. around that time, anyway. There were there were films like the MCU was in full swing, you know, and you got all these big films coming out, and it's like, oh, this is very different. Um, but yeah, no, it was good. Yeah, yeah. It was also kind of western slightly. I mean, obviously, it's not like a full on western, but in many regards, it got a lot of Western themes in it, and uh, obviously the location and stuff is a big one. Yeah. But, like, looking after a young child and being, like, this outlaw. Yeah. Like, being hunted down by the bigger, also outlaws, but, like, the kind of bigger group, It it's got, yeah. I agree, yeah. Okay, so my number 76 um, is Uncle Buck. Ooh! I have never I seen, have it. seen this. Uh, yeah, no, I actually haven't seen Uncle Buck. Um, my uncle uh, came for Christmas like uh, two years ago or whatever, and it was on TV then, and I watched a bit of it. I know it's about a fat guy, but I, I haven't seen it. He says it's very good, but his taste in films, I, I don't think is that great, but he says it's very good. Um, but yeah, I haven't seen it. So, Sophie, why do you like it? I mean, it's just got a good performance by John Candy in it. Um, I'm also a big fan of the director, John Hughes. Uh, he's made other films like uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off and stuff like that. Um, and also, I just think it's a good feel. It's another feel good film. I've got quite a few of those on my list, but um, yeah. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll have to agree with you there. I think John Candy's performance is uh, one of the best that he's done. It's stuck with me. Um, I don't know, maybe personally, I think playing trains and automobiles, he's a bit better in that. But, like, again, they're both really good performances. Probably own it on DVD somewhere. I think I own it deep in the recesses of thousands of DVDs. Is, but, is, is this an 80s film? Because I didn't know John Hughes directed it, and I yes. love John Hughes's films. Didn't he direct a part of John Hughes? 89. Wow. I'm going to... I am actually going to watch it. I'm going to watch it's, that now. It's worth watching. John Hughes is a brilliant like director. He was the, like, 80s teen director, in my opinion. <laughs> He was brilliant, definitely a brilliant director. Yeah. My 76 um, is Black Handsman. Oh, uh, such a good film. You've just seen this, right? Yeah. Yes. I've probably seen this. Yeah, yeah. It's it higher is, on my list. Yeah, it is horrific to watch. Like, it's so unsettling just how kind of real it feels a lot of the time and how horrible everyone is in that film. Well, not everyone, but a lot of the people in that film. Are, are are nasty people. It's it's worth watching, like just both being a good film and also, like it's it's worth watching just to kind of un- get an understanding of what it would have been like back in that time period. And I feel like it deserves the Oscar for best picture. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I th- yeah. Compared to what one, it did get it best screenplay, didn't it? That or the favorite back then. Yeah, it got best original screenplay, which or adapted. One of the, I think it was adapted, but yeah, and it, if, it deserved. It, I think I think it should have won best. In another sense, if anyone has seen uh, Star Wars and believes that that is Adam Driver's only performance, um, thankfully he Wrong. is actually a good actor and can actually act better yeah, he's than a that. Very good actor. Um, yeah. So Black Clansman is one of the his. rise of the Skywalker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Black Klansman, he is in, though. No, I, um, yeah, he's very good in Klansman. I wouldn't say it's his best performance. I've got another one on here, which I think both of you can guess. Uh, coming up later, not this, uh, which I think is probably his best I performance. I believe so. that is also in mine. Um, yeah. It's in mine as well, because it's the same film. I love yeah. that film. Anyway, so, we will not get onto that film until 
yep. it is time. Till it comes up. Um, so my 76 is... Now, I had to choose between... When I was doing my list, I, like I said, I had, I've said before, I had like an overlap of 13. Uh, I had to choose really between sequels when it came down to it because I really didn't know what to take out. So I chose this one over the original. I chose Blade Runner, Blade Runner 2049 over the original. Uh, the cinematography in that film... Is it's, yes, it's incredible. It's so so good. It's incredible. Um, I didn't actually know it was a Dennis Villeneuve film until the other day. But yeah, huh. I did. I didn't know that. But um, it's a brilliantly done film, and the ending as well is brilliant. Um, what do you guys think? It's just it? a brilliant film in did, general. Did you prefer uh, it to the yeah, the definitely. the first? No, I I I I'm. I, I definitely preferred the first. It's not that I don't like the sequel at all. I think that it, it, it's very good, but I prefer the first, personally. Um, yeah, but like you said, the cinematography in that film, because it was uh, Roger Deakins. Was well, Roger Deakins? Who, yes, who, yeah. Who my, won, my that, won, won his first Oscar for this film. Um, and like a lot of the time when someone gets nominated that many times, they kind of just give the person the win for whatever it is if it's been too many times um that's what it seems to be anyway but this film he definitely deserved it like it's not like they kind of just handed it to him a bit like 1917 like they did this year which i think didn't have the best cinematography i mean don't get me wrong it was good but i don't think it was this blade run 24 no definitely definitely deserved the oscar for best cinematography no i agree it's a brilliant film uh was actually mainstream as well um but yeah, no, I agree. I saw it in hey. IMAX as well. And the sound design and everything for that film, like, I think that took it to another level. Was it? Yeah. Uh, so my number seventy-five um, is the film Airplane. I don't know if either of you have seen it. Oh, the nineteen eighty-one. Nineteen eighty. I haven't seen it. Oh, Brad, what are you playing? Isn't isn't it's it meant to be like a comedy? To it. Which wasn't needed, but the sequel's pretty pointless. It's oh, that's a good film. I mean, there's again not much you can say about this one. Uh, just that like, people should watch it because it is a good, a good film. I feel like it's one of those films that you can watch it multiple times and you find uh, another thing extra funny the more times you see it. Yeah, or, or you kind of see jokes in the background that you wouldn't have seen the first time. I like, can't. I can't comment. I haven't seen it. It's quite. It's quite a visually funny film as well. Not just writing it it got a lot of like visual gags which a lot of the time i think personally for me i think are a bit boring after like five minutes but this somehow makes it work Uh and like you can kind of see things in the background that like they just threw in as like an extra joke for someone who might be looking into the background like yeah Uh it's funny um my 75 is uh the miseducation of cameron post which I don't know if either of you. I haven't seen it. You've you, re- yeah, recommended, you recommended it. I haven't it. seen it yet. Yeah, yeah it's worth watching. 100% worth watching. It's it's funny, but it's also emotional. Um, it's feel good in a lot of ways. Like you guys like your feel good films. Um, the performances are great as well. Uh, Chloe Grace Mortez, is that how you say her name? Yeah. She's great in it. She's the main character. Um, it's on Netflix right now. So is I it based on a true story? Really um, I think it's like based on like the true story of a camp, like a rather than on this single person. Like it, it, it's grounded in real events, but I don't think like the one character is a main character, like a real character. I think they're kind of like an amalgamation of a bunch of other characters, okay, not characters, people from real life. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Um. My 75 is Les Corhistes, which is another French film on my list. Um, I love this film so much. Um, have you, any of you seen it? I've not. Never heard of it. You've never heard of it. So it's, I think it translates to no. the, the choir. It is about, it's sort of set in, it's not set in modern day anyway. Um, well, it's sort of set in modern day at the start and then it goes back. This isn't spoilers, don't worry. So it, like, it goes back to um, the times these people were at a border school, uh, boarding school, and just, um, yeah, 
there's a classic line from the film as well, which is action, reaction. But obviously, if you haven't seen it, you won't know the line. It's not that iconic as others being a French film. Um, but yeah, no, it's a brilliant film. I'd like highly suggest it. I've seen it about three times. Uh, not by my own will, though. That was when I took French in school and was forced to watch it three times, which maybe that's why I got on my favourite films. So you say forced to watch it like it was not something that you would possibly have watched normally? No, I would have like, necessarily watched it again? I, no, I would have watched it again, but I just... Well, you know me anyway. I prefer to watch new films than rather we re-watch films because I feel like there's so many films I haven't seen that I want to watch new films anyway. But I would have watched it again, um, but I just felt forced because, you know, it's... um, I don't know. I, I can't explain it. It's just... It is a good film. It's just not... It's not your feel-good film, which I would prefer to watch. But, yeah. There you go. But it is a feel-good film in the sense of the ending, but I don't want to spoil anything, so I'm not going to say I'll move on from that. But it's a very good film. You should check it out. One of the best French films I've seen. Not actually the highest French film on my list, so it's actually lower than some other French films that I have. So, yeah. Um, yeah. But you prefer it over La Haine? Or how have you seen that film? Yeah, I prefer it over La Haine, although La Haine is an excellent <laughs> film. It's an excellent film. Um, I just think you got not just you guys generally, but like everyone, anyone that's listening to this needs to really, you know, like Bong Joon-ho said when uh, Parasite won the Oscar, like foreign cinema is just incredible and it doesn't get enough attention, I don't think. Even in this day and age, it doesn't get enough attention. Um, I know you love foreign cinema as well, Craig. Um, yeah, I, 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 I do really love foreign film. And I, I think what I really love about it is is the culture that goes behind making the film because obviously it's so different they, yeah they either get away with a lot more or or the film is so much more censored than it, it would be if it was made by an american audience it's so much more interesting to watch the, yeah. how a film is made for the country rather than made for the world like a lot of american films are kind of made for worldwide distribution rather than for just america whereas like you look at like french films or north korean films they kind of and South Korean films, um, they kind of are made more for their country rather than made for the world, like World Access. So it's interesting how they're made to fit in for their people rather than for the world. Yeah, and it's I agree. interesting to see different characters and different ideologies that you might not necessarily see because they can either get away with saying a lot more or they can't say a lot more. It's like House of Flying Daggers just would not work necessarily in Hollywood cinemas, I don't think, anyway. <laughs> It just doesn't work as a film. But yeah, that's oh, true. That's controversial. Or, or, what, what if we use a different example? Say, even like if we're talking about foreign film, I guess you could say British films sort of comes in that category. Like to, compared to Hollywood, like Ken Loach's um, I Daniel Blake would just not work in Hollywood, but we get it as Brits because yeah, we, yeah, we understand. It. It, yeah. Yeah. So is that sort of what you're saying? The cultural context behind yeah, it. Yeah, well? it's kind of the cultural context behind it. It's so different to watch. Yeah, a it's... completely different society, but to that society that's watching it, that it's been made for, it doesn't feel different. Yeah. It's like, again, like another example from a British film, This Is England, um, which isn't on my list. Uh, um, don't know whether it's either of yours, but Mine. that doesn't feel... It doesn't feel... If, I mean, obviously it's shocking and it's horrible to watch. And it's not nice, but it doesn't feel like we don't get it. Whereas like someone in America or someone in... India or whatever might not understand like why yeah. it's so horrible yeah, yeah, why it's is. not so horrible if that makes any sense like it, it because it because it, it's made for us as British audiences specifically like it's not made to gain attention in America or anywhere like that it's made to draw, highlight draw attention to things that are happening in our society where like American films are kind of made more just a lot of the time feels like they're made more just for worldwide people yeah I agree. Definitely. Um, so my number 74 uh, is a film that traumatised me as a child, uh, British Terabithia. I feel like I've heard of that but never seen it. Is it an anime? No. It is... It's about these two friends and what happens near the end of the film It is so upsetting. It honestly broke my heart. Is that the one with the guy from Hunger Games in? Yes. The blonde, yeah. the blonde guy, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I know. I know what you're on about. Uh, 
it sounds familiar, but I've never like properly heard of it. Like you're saying it, and it's kind of clicking with me in a way that it's like I should should know what this is, but it doesn't sound at all. I can't even like picture a poster or who's in it or anything. Do you know what I want to say? It's Disney, but I don't feel like it is. Is it? No. No, it seems like. Is it? Is it? Is it like a kids' film? It is. Sounds like it should be, but it's traumatizing. I mean, I feel like the theme, the theme that is covered in it, uh, could go over the heads a little bit of some younger viewers. But if you're sat there and you're watching it, it's a very big standout point. I don't want to spoil it. That's all, right now. Well, well, okay, so what's the rough plot of it then? Because I, I literally have never heard of this film. Basically, you've got uh, a loner at school. He meets this girl. They become like best friends. Um, and then, like, they make this, like, they go into this forest and they make up this whole world together. And they draw and they they just act like kids. They make, like, rope squ- swings and stuff like that. And then something massive happens and it changes the whole dynamic of the film. Wow, you stumped This is the first time I've ever been stumped with a film. I have never heard of this before. Like, it's not even sounding at all remotely for me. Is it, is it, how, like, when did it come out? Uh, it came out so in like 2007. Oh, okay, 2007. I think, yeah, I've heard of it. I thought, I'd heard a lot of people talk about it. I don't know why you, I'd, like, I'd heard, I'd, I'd actually heard uh, some people who like anime talk about it, so I thought it was an anime, but I guess it wasn't. No, it's not. Huh. Well, it does sound like an anime. this now. Film I've never heard of before. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, um, last episode, I said, right at the very end, I have a film that's based on a TV show. This is that film that's about to come up. Uh, at number 74, I've got El Camino. Oh, wow, okay. Oh. Yeah. Why didn't I put that oh. in my my list? Oh, that's a good one. So is that an honourable mention for you? That is, uh, that is an honourable mention for me. Right. Is this so, the Breaking Bad film? Yes. And I Breaking Bad, yeah, sorry. Breaking Bad. I love Breaking Bad so much. Okay, so, so I, I, won't, I won't speak too much about it. Um, but I love Breaking Bad. It's so good. It's one of the best TV shows, in my opinion. And it's one of the last ones that were made before binging was kind of a thing. So yeah. each episode, if you get as much like an emotional reaction out of it than you would get from like binging five episodes of Netflix, because each episode was made to sustain an audience for a while. And this film comes out, well, how many years later did it come out? Like 10 years later than the ending of Breaking Bad? It's something it, like it that. Finished in like, didn't it finish in like 2013? Yeah, I, I mean, obviously I watched Breaking Bad way later than it finished, but this film coming out, I'd watched Breaking Bad like three, like, and then this film comes out like three years later after I'd watched it. So it'd been a little while since I'd watched it. And I watched this the night that it came out on Netflix. And I like made sure I had nothing else going on because I wanted to watch this. And it feels like an extended episode of Breaking, but not in a bad way. It is. It's very good. Like I highly, highly recommend it. If you've watched Breaking Bad, obviously, it would make zero sense if you haven't watched the entire story of Breaking Bad. Oh, I would say something, though. With these sort of films, people are usually expecting, like, a, a whole, like, oh, they've brought everyone back. Do not expect a whole, we're bringing everyone back film. No, it, it really feels like just another episode, like a continuation, yeah. but not in a bad way. That's what makes it's, it good. It's Literally, it's just, like, an extra episode. But yeah. it's longer, the performance is so much better, and oh, I just can't explain. I have to I, say... I think the s- yeah. the scene in the apartment. Well, uh, that's it's wait, not a spoiler. Wait. Sophie hasn't seen it. Okay. Just if if I just say that, it's not a spoiler. The scene in the apartment was brilliant. The whole sequence. I think I know. I think I know which part you're talking about, and yeah. I, I do have to agree. The whole sequence. Yeah. That's all I'll say. That that's no spoiler. Yeah. No. I, I know. I I'm, I'm pretty confident. I know. Yeah. But, it's, uh, it's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. My only negative I will say about. This film, though, is, and I'm not going to spoil anything that happens in Breaking Bad, but I think the ending of Breaking Bad is better than the ending of this. And this is now the definitive ending of the entire story. I think the ending of Breaking Bad's story is better 
than this ending. I loved Breaking Bad, but I hated the ending. I thought it was such a weak ending to Breaking Bad. Well, I, I preferred the ending. I thought the ending was... was it didn't feel like Breaking Bad, Breaking Bad the ending. Breaking... To well, me. We're not, we can't really say much about it, but I, I, I really did truly love the ending of Breaking Bad. I thought, I thought it was a perfect... Perfect. It just felt perfect for the show. And uh, this ending kind of just feels a bit less so. I'm not going to say why, obviously, because Sophie's East haven't finished it, but, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, I see what you, you mean, actually, this. thinking about it, I see what you mean. No, I, was, I, know, I was sort of thinking about the cat. yeah, no, I won't say anything, but I know what you mean. No, oh, yeah, I guess the ending to Breaking Bad was alright, yeah. No, I see what you mean. Anyway, I'll move on to my 74, before we get into any spoilers. Um, Hot Fuzz. Oh, good film. Hot Fuzz, love Hot Fuzz. Uh... What it, there's so much to say about Hot Fuzz. Uh, I have seen it like three times, part of the Cornetto trilogy by Edgar Wright. Um, not an official like sequel trilogy or anything. It's just like he did three films. I think The World's End and uh, Shaun of the Dead, which was Dead. which was in my list earlier or one of our lists, I believe. I think it was in my list. Yeah, it was, it was in my yours. list. It was in my list. So um, The World's End does not make my list, by the way. <laughs> um, because I think that's the weakest. It's of not the bad three. film though. No, I just think it's the weakest. It's not of the bad. Three. Yeah, it's. It, I I do agree it's the weakest, but I I, okay. I I like you. Don't think it it it's a bad film. Like it's still good. Like if you've seen the other two, connected trilogy films, you're not gonna feel disappointed by the world's end, as in thinking, oh god, that was dreadful. Yeah, no, it's I agree. It's just it's not it's not as strong as the other two. I do, yeah. and I do personally feel that's why it's higher than Shaun of the Dead. That Hot Fuzz was the best one. Uh, there's so many great moments in Hot Fuzz. And again, it's a British film, and I love, as you know, I love British film. Um, it's just brilliant, I think. You know that whole, not to, I don't think it's a spoiler, really, that whole, you know, the whole scene with the, where they're, they're dressed in black uh, um, around the church, if that makes sense. I don't want to spoil anything, but it has been out, like, for years. I think it was, like, 2007 it came out. Yeah. If I'm right. Um, but yeah, no, there's yeah, just so many great moments in that. The whole, the ending to that film is brilliant. I love it. It's, um, it's sort of that, uh, what do you call it? When it's like sort of, re not re like it relieves the audience of, it's, you know, when there's the typical bad guy and then they finally get their coming up, come up and, and do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I don't. It's got that. And it's a really sort of creative way as well of, uh, doing that to the, to the bad guy i won't say what but if you haven't seen it see it it's great okay so moving on to my number 73 is i feel like this film deserves to be higher up my list now looking at it but is uh, the film selma i have never seen it it's on netflix i keep meaning to see it uh that's my thoughts on it really all in all <laughs> i really I... recommend it i think it was i think it was really good um yeah craig I no, um, I I've heard of it, but I haven't seen it. I've heard such good things about it though. Yeah, same. But I, I haven't got around. Is it on Netflix? I think it it, it was at a time. Oh, no, it might oh. not be anymore. Oh well. I will check after this if it is on Netflix still. I really think it's worth the watch, though. It's about, like, uh, Martin Luther King and, like, what he was fighting for. And I think it's a, it's a quite... It's a slow film, but when it starts getting going, it's really, really interesting. Yeah. I will give interesting. it a watch. No, I have not seen that at all. I will give it a watch, probably. I, I do mean to get around to it. Anyway. Um, okay. It's interesting, Brad, that you put Hot Fuzz as 74. Because Hot Fuzz is my 73. Oh, there you go. Um, we both feel very similarly about this film, clearly. Yeah. Um, but, however, I do not think it's the best Cornetta trilogy film. Do you oh. not? We, do you think Shaun of the Dead no. is? Yes. Oh, is Shaun yes, of the Dead in I your really list? Do. Yes. Well, fair it enough. It is. Fair I, enough. I, I think that's though because I do really like horror films. Like, I mean, Hot Fuzz is still funny. It's fantastic. It's really well made. Like, everything about it, it's, like you said... Hot, Hot Fuzz does have horror elements to it, though. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, it has horror elements was, to it, but it's not the I direction. I was genuinely like, scared as a kid. of the horror film. More what? of Hot Fuzz. Yeah, of 
of what I was explaining earlier, that scene with, the, with, with all the adults in those black costumes, like at the church, that's scary, scary shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then you find out it's ketchup, not no, blood, and you're like, oh my god. But anyway, I was like, no, I know what you mean, but 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 I, I do really prefer from that, like. Like you can, uh, like when this, when all these are finished, these episodes are finished, you'll be able to see how much I prefer Shaun of the Dead to Hot Fuzz. Like there is a big difference, big gap between the two of these. Yeah. But Hot Fuzz is still like really good, yeah. and it, obviously it's it's still it's quite higher up on my list. Like, I mean, obviously it's not at the bottom, but it's kind of coming up towards middle bottom sort of place. So I, I do think of it higher than a lot of these other films. Um. Yeah, it's just yeah. I mean, we can't really say much more than Brad's already said, but yeah, it's worth a watch. Yeah, um, yeah, okay. My seventy-three is another foreign film, uh, Old Boy. Oh yes! Oh yeah! Yes, yes. I love it. and Craig. I must say, in this list, um, not just in this list, but in like life, Craig has definitely. Um, recommended a lot of films to me, and I've gone away and watched them. I loved Old Boy. It's so good. It's also on my list, but it's much higher up. It's... Yeah. Oh God, Sophie, have you watched it yet? I've lent it to you. <laughs> I knew he was going to bring this up. I actually oh, haven't it seen it yet. Oh, <laughs> you haven't. need to watch it by the time we finish this, so you can talk about it when I talk about it. Do you know what? I still haven't uh, seen Hero. Have I've got Hero discussion. sat right here that you also lent me. I, I still haven't seen Don't it. Don't bother. Don't bother. That one's so shite. Is it really so bad? Really? That one. Hero, yeah. I can see why House of Flying Daggers is considered his best one if it precedes Hero. Well, like Hero is shite. Oh boy, though. Oh my god, I love that film. It's so good. It is oh, brilliant so for anyone who's not seen it. You cannot talk about anything. No, even, you can't. Even when Sophie has seen it, we cannot talk about it. It, oh, it is Sophie, you brilliant. You need to watch it. Like, I we am, can talk about I it between am, like, us. Buzzing. We can talk. Yeah, we can talk about it between us once you've seen it. You can talk about it once you've seen it to other people who have seen it. But if you talk about it even remotely to anyone who hasn't seen it, no, I know. Like, it, it could brilliant, ruin though. a viewing experience of that film. But it is brilliant. It's. It, uh, I watched between uh, recording this this episode and the previous episode. I watched his uh, other two in the Vengeance trilogy, um, which I know Brad knows about this. But if anyone else who doesn't know about this, Old Boy is the second out of the in the Spengen's trilogy by the same director and they all kind of revolve around the same theme of um but I believe they're like the Connecticut the trilogy and the, they're not sequels are they yeah they're not they're sequels in any way whatsoever like they're not in the same world uh, but yeah it's like the Connecticut trilogy in the way it connects but you can see why Old Boy is the one that stood the test of time because in my opinion the other two I would not recommend like they are they're... the third one is alright Lady Vengeance the first one isn't very good um, but old oh boy, you can see why it stood the test of time and why it's still one of them that you can rewatch and watch again. And you can see why America tr- tried and failed massively to do a remake of it. Like, don't watch the remake. It's dreadful. It's one of the worst remakes I've ever seen. Which one? I is? Would, I would the go as far as to, yeah, old boy's remake. Yeah, I would even go as far as to say the old boy remake is worse than the Avatar: Last Airbender. Like, oh, Christ. Remake. Christ. Yeah, it's dreadful. But once you've seen Old Boy, you can see how much more dreadful of a film it is. Like, it's bad as a film if you haven't seen the original Old Boy. But if you've watched the original Old Boy and you see how much they've butchered that film, you will see why it's dreadful. But Old Boy, highly, highly recommend that. Good pick. Very good pick. Right, so my number 72 is another classic film. It's Forrest Gump. Right. But can I say, when I had this at like 90-something, you guys were like, what, why Forrest Gump? And I was like, do you know what? I'm not sure. I just really enjoyed it. Well, not really enjoyed it because it was in my 90s. But still, why is it now in your 70s? Oh, I don't, th- I don't remember attacking you for it. No, Craig oh. attacked you for that. Um, it's in my 70s because I think it is a classic film. And I think it was... I think it is one of Tom Hanks' better films, even though I've got a couple more Tom Hanks films higher up my list. I, Tom Hanks has had so many I better films it. than Forrest Gump. I've got more, but I enjoyed it. I, I, I enjoyed it as a film, and yeah. 
I can't believe I got I roasted for Despicable truly, Me. Truly hate Forrest Gump. <laughs> Are you comparing no, Brad, Despicable roast. Me to Forrest Gump? <laughs> no, I, I would better. say this: Despicable Me deserves to be on this list compared to Forrest Gump. Exactly. Oh. Exactly. Then again, I have both on my list because I did enjoy both. Then again, this is just what we enjoy. I'm sorry, but so. Oh, Christ! Oh God, I cannot stand that film. <laughs> Oh, I'm having like a mini aneurysm right now. <laughs> well, let's move on to the to Craig. So oh, 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 I need a mental rest. My okay, word. Come on. Okay. <laughs> okay. Two more left. Seventy-two is a current brother raising Arizona. I don't know whether either of you have even heard. I of haven't this. seen it, but I've heard of it. I've heard of this, right. and do you know why? Right. Because you recommended right. it to me. I've... Yes. That is why I've heard of it. Oh. It's so good. Oh, I love it so much. It's so funny. I and, honestly um, feel like you need to start your own podcast just on your own of Craig's recommendations. Just every week you sit there for 20 minutes about them. listing films. Just You've got a list of about 2,000 films that you just list. and that's Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, I could go on and list loads of you films. Know, you know, we, um, can, we can sort out a side podcast for you just to Craig's recommendations. <laughs> um, uh, sure. But, um, raise... Arizona uh, stars Nicolas Cage and Holly Hunter and if the idea of Nicolas Cage in a weird Coen Brothers comedy drama film doesn't sell it to you enough uh, I can further sell it to you by the fact it's about Nicolas Cage kidnapping a baby and then bounty hunters coming after him. It is it is worth the watch and I, I was talking to uh, our film teacher uh, a little while ago and we both agreed that this is basically the comedic version of No Country for Old Men because it is a western and it's about this man who's kind of done the wrong thing but for the right reasons. Is it good though? Uh, yes, it's good. It's very good. I really do think it's it's good. And uh, it's about this man who's done the wrong things for the right reasons who's then being hunted by like a bounty hunter to try and kill him. No, I've only Thanks. seen three. No, one Nicolas Cage film in my life, so I might check this out. Hello. Ghost Rider. Yeah, Ghost Rider. <laughs> Maybe I've God. seen the sequel to that. I don't know. I can't even. I had like, the misfortune of Ghost watching Ghost. the Wicker Man remake, which I didn't need. <sighs> Nicolas Cage has done good films. He is a good actor. Is he? Like, oh Wicker no, Man that isn't. that that's a lie. Then I have seen him in another film. That one, what Mandy or whatever it was called. I've seen him Did in that. Have you seen Mandy? I yeah. have not seen Mandy yet. Is that yeah? Oh no, because I couldn't tell you about it because you haven't seen it yet. No, it's it's actually okay. It's wacko, but it's okay. Yeah, that's what I've heard about. It's a wacko kind of horror movie. It is whack, but yeah. Oh, you know what? That's an honorary mention for me actually because I fu- I lo- I fucking love that film. It is whack. I fucking love it. But yeah, I should have put that in my list really. Right, fair enough. Uh, anyway, my 72 is Home Alone, the first one, and that is the oh, yeah. only one in my list, because that is the only one I've seen, because I have this weird thing where if I really like the first one, I don't want to watch the sequels, because they're usually shit. Uh, let's not lie. Oh, um, you're right about that. Yeah, there's you're only right a select few, life. Terminator, Aliens, um, even though I've not seen Aliens all the way through, um, but I've heard it's good. Anyway, there's only a select few sequels that are good. Um, but yeah, Home Alone, I, I I love this for obvious reasons. Um, how can you not enjoy it? It's like literally, especially when you're a kid watching it. I know for, for I, I feel like I had a different experience to how my parents would have seen it because I was a kid myself watching Kevin do all that, if you get what I mean. It's like a, yeah, it's like a child. It's like a child's dream to be left home alone and can do anything they want. Is it? <laughs> child's dream? No, 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 like, you know the scene... Sophie, do you need help? <laughs> Sophie, do you know what? <laughs> you know the scene where he's sat in front of the TV and he's eating that, that massive amount of ice cream? I feel like, as a child, you sat there like, oh, I really want that. Yeah. I think the beauty about that film is, like Sophie says, it kind of does play on children's dream of being able to do whatever they want with no real, like, problems. But it also does point out the fact that, yeah, you think this is a good idea, but actually, like, a lot of bad things could happen from it. And you kind of see Kevin, towards the end, kind of regret, not regret, because he didn't wish it, but, like, kind of miss his family and 
feel happier for having them back rather than wishing that they were gone. Like, it, it kind of not only kind of indulges children's fantasies in it, but also kind of teaches them about, like, actually sometimes you don't want to be alone. If that makes any sense? I agree. Mm-hmm. Do you like it? Yeah. Then? I don't. I wouldn't have thought you would like to Craig. I don't know why. I just thought in my mind you wouldn't have. I, I think it's average. I don't. I don't think it's amazing. I think it's kind of average. I just like. Loved I, it. I, just watch. I wouldn't. It. I wouldn't You're actively not ever pick it to watch. But no, I get enjoyment out of it. But I'd never actively pick to watch it. Like I'd never go. Do you know what? I really fancy watching a comedy. I'll watch Home Alone. Like yeah, we well, put it like that. It's a bit, time, yeah, I, I would definitely yeah. watch it. But. I, I would never actively pick it. Like, even as a Christmas film, I wouldn't pick it. But if it was picked for me on TV or by my family members, I wouldn't be like, oh, not home alone. Yeah, yeah you know? I get what you mean. Yeah, I get you. I, th- I think also it, it it's a good film, but, like, the pacing just before the third act is a bit slow. Like, before they actually break into his house and after kind of he's had all his fun, it's kind of just a bit, kind of drags a bit when he's kind of, the church and he's going to the supermarket and like they're all feeling sorry for him all the adults i think that part's yeah. kind of the most the part where it feels it's a where bit it drags slow the most. though yeah yeah because like suddenly it's kind of like it's like kind of a sugar rush you have all this build up and all this excitement and then suddenly bam you crash from because like kevin's then realizing the real problems of the world so i guess the pacing in that makes sense like he's realized the severity of his situation that he's going to protect his house and it's kind of, he's kind of stopped moving so fast having so much fun but I think that's probably one of my weakest points about that film is just telling the pacing it's a bit like it's too sudden that it goes really slowly I agree finally moving on to my 71 I might get a bit of shit from you two for this one but my number 71 oh is Joker hmm. okay alright I'm done no <laughs> I let me Shall we just re-record episodes one and two with a new <laughs> yeah, person in the podcast? It can I explain? Please. <laughs> you can try. You can try and explain. I feel like there's lots of cons and a couple of pros to this film. This is why it's so low down on this list. I think the concept of it was an alright idea. I think the narrative is very clunky, but visually... I, it really excites me looking at this film and I'm like, wow, I didn't enjoy it all, but I did enjoy watching it. There were moments that shocked me. I don't know. I think the acting was phenomenal, really. Look, here's the thing. And I will say this. And I believe I watched it like a day after Craig because we both watched sort of around the same time. And I said... And I sort of had to even win him round on this, that there are things about it that are good. I do think that Joaquin's performance was good. Uh, I don't think it was standout, though. Um, I do think um, that the cinematography and the score were both amazing. That is the only things about the film that I think was amazing. It literally builds you up for something that we don't... You know I was talking about audience relief earlier? It does not give you that. It builds up something that never happens... There is one very good scene in it, one very good scene. And for a film that's nominated for Best Picture, there should be more than one very good scene. And that is the scene in the, in my opinion, in the um, with Robert De Niro. Uh, that's yes. the, that is a very good scene, I will admit. Yeah. But the problem with this film I had was that going into it, literally like a year, when it was announced that it was even happening, like a year before, everyone had jumped on the bandwagon. When it was announced that Joaquin Phoenix was in it, everyone, no one even knew who Joaquin, like barely... Like, he's a great actor, yeah, but I wouldn't say he was mainstream until Joker because I, d- I barely knew who he was until, you, you know, we did film studies. And then everyone's like, oh, Joaquin Phoenix, Joaquin Phoenix. And what the problem I had with that film was everyone jumped on the bandwagon before it came out. So it was like they had already made their minds up about whether they like it or not. If it was dreadful, they would have, like, if it was, like, worse than it already is, what I'm saying, like, they would have still loved it, which is one of those films. Whereas with Endgame, yeah, you have people that are actually, like, Mm, this that, this still could be shit. This could go very wrong. Like Craig said earlier, it could still go very wrong. Whereas with Joker, they were already insistent that it's the best film that were probably ever made in history, which is why I had a problem with it. Because it wasn't. It oh, yeah, wasn't. I fully get what you mean. I mean, I don't absolutely adore it. I definitely agree that there are parts that are good, there are parts that are bad. But I think, yeah, I think as a film, it was, it was all right. But I get the part that there were not many 
standout scenes that are amazing and I think what annoys me is the people that are just like, oh, Joker, I don't like the people who make it a personality trait to like this film. No, I agree, yeah. It's just, I, just, I think it's ridiculous, the amount of people that just jumped on the bandwagon like a year before it even came out and was, was it was just ridiculous. And I, I don't think, I think it was too overhyped. And sometimes it's not always the film's fault. Like I said, the cinematography and the score and the performance were great, but that was overshadowed by the hype. And unfortunately, it got all that hype and it shouldn't have got that hype. But there you go. Craig? I've already moved on before Craig blocks me. Have I basically said all your thoughts, Craig? I am so speechless that you even had the idea, the audacity to put this on your list, Sophie. Yeah. You should be ashamed. Like, you know what? She's just had four okay, scum as well like this before film. that. You just... Oh, you both have disappointed me this episode. Despicable me, four scum, Joker. What are you playing at, huh? Not doing very well, am I? Avatar? Come on. You should be sick. No, no, I'm kidding. If you like Joker, you can like Joker. But I think it's dreadful, okay? It is dreadful. I, I, I think there are a lot of problems with it. There are a lot more problems, like Sophie said, than there are positives. The, 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 the performance of, by Joaquin Phoenix is good. I wouldn't say it's great. But it, it's great in the context of the film because everyone else is pretty bad. Even yeah, Robert yeah, De Niro, yeah. the great Robert De Niro, you can tell he's kind of bored and he's just phoning it in. Like, it, and Brad likes the score. I think the score is a bit, whatever. <laughs> if, if any of the things that should have won an Oscar, it would have probably been the score for that film. Like, I'll agree with him on that. But I think it, the score it did again, win that, didn't it? It, it, it did, yeah. Yeah, it did win. The, it did win the Oscar. And I think out of like the twelve nominations it got, or eleven nominations it got. Really, the only one that it could have possibly been nominated for was School. All right, nothing else. I don't even think Joaquin should have been nominated for that, let alone win. I really, really, and I've said this before in the past, and I'll probably continue to say it. I think Adam Driver, his performance in Marriage Story was a lot better. Like he should have won. Oh too. my so god, it was so nuances. good. Nuances, so yes. good. There's so many nuances and and character traits, traits, and you can tell exactly what sort of character and person he was just by like one or two scenes, whereas Joaquin Phoenix is so over the top and stereotypical and it's, it, he literally just says, I have mental issues. Like, he doesn't really show it and that's not his fault. That is the script and that's the di- directing in that film. I, 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 I do really do think Joaquin what? Phoenix is a good, a good actor, but I think the problem with that film is massively the script. The cinematography is is also okay, but the script, you can tell, and, and that, that whole thing about how they were basically writing the script as they were filming it, that is so obvious. The script, like Brad said again, how there's no real audience satisfaction by the end of the film. Fully agree with it. And again, that scene with Robert De Niro uh, on the chat show is the best scene in that film. But compared to ways of shit that you'd had before it, no wonder it's the best scene. It's kind of a, it's kind of an average scene in context to any other film. Uh, it should not be nominated for so many things. And I really do agree again that it is the audience's problem for hyping this film up to the point in which you say that you don't it, don't like it, you're in more trouble than saying that you do. Yeah. It's, it's not yeah. going to be remembered, though. That's the problem. Is it's been nominated for 11 Oscars or 12 Oscars. I mean, it, it won, what, like two or three of them? It's not going to be one of these films that deserves them. It's not going to be remembered. Like, later in 10, 15 years' time, people aren't going to go, do you remember Joker? My God, what a fantastic film. People have watched it once or twice, probably never going to watch it again. They'll probably go back and watch it once no one, st- once everyone's still talking about it and there's no hype for it. And people, oh, it was better. better than, it was not as good as I remember it. I remember it a bit better because the film isn't very good. And it, people say that all these things that, that they like, like the score and the acting and that one scene is great. But in my opinion, it's good because what's come before it is shit. So it's going to look great. But taken out of context of this film as a whole and looked at individually, they're not amazing. One thing I'd say against that, and you know I agree with you on Joker, but I would say the score is literally one of the first things in the film. So there isn't much to come before it. So I I instantly did feel the score was great. Uh, But, you know, I, I I do get what you mean. But I've got a question for you both for this. Do you yeah. think that if Heath Ledger's Joker did a film similar to this, it would be no. better? No, because no. again, it would have been overhyped, no. and it would have just caused it, the same it, problem. The problem isn't the the fact that I don't like 
Joaquin Phoenix's Joker, the problem is everything else about the film. If Even if Heath Ledger's Joker had done it, I don't think the film would have been very good because it's still got thousands of other problems with it. It's... The problem is the way it was marketed, the... for one, like marketing yeah. it as a... What was it? They said a drop. It's not a superhero film. It's a it's a compassionate drama or whatever. It was like, it's and what Craig was it's, saying about the script is that about find, saying he has a mental illness. He's literally right. It literally to say he has a mental illness. They literally he doesn't say anything. He literally gives a card to someone on a bus that reads, "I have a mental illness." Like, how is that really progressive? In ter- in like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, it doesn't even show off like his. Acting because Joaquin Phoenix is a very good actor. He's very good in what he's been given. But this performance, instead of you know being given the chance to shine and to show it through like a scene without any dialogue or anything else, but just to show his mental illness, it, 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 he doesn't have that chance. All he does is just hand a card out that goes, "I'm sorry, I have a condition," or "I've got a mel- mental illness," and he never really at any point. And also another big problem in that film is it feels so wrong to be rooting for the Joker. And it feels so wrong to it have does, him as yeah. a main character. Yeah, like, it does. It just doesn't work, in my opinion. You can like this film, right? Anyone can like any film they want to. You can like like shit like Transformers or Fast and Furious and think they're your favourite film, and that's fine. But I will say this about Joker. Like, a lot of these other people who will say, like, Transformers or whatever is their favourite film, I'll probably just shut the fuck up and I'll just be like, oh, whatever. You can like that, and I'll probably really not say much, but Joker really gets under my skin just by more how much audiences have hyped it up as being this incredible film when really, really isn't. And and whenever anyone said, you're just trying to dislike it so that you can see different. No, I'm not trying to dislike it so I can see different. I'm disliking it because it's a shit film. Sophie, I've got a question for you. Did you see it in cinema? I didn't, know. No, I didn't either. I, I didn't see it for a long time. Like, I saw it like five, five, no. Oh, I saw it in the Oscars death race, so I saw it at least. It came out in November, so I saw it like four months after. It was uh, January or February, because you watched it like a day after me or a day before. Me. Yeah, no, I watched it a day after, I think. Um, I watched like it because it, it was up for Oscars and I wanted to watch as many of those films as possible. I didn't yeah, go out same. of my way to go to the cinema or what, get it on DVD and watch it as soon as possible. I probably, if it weren't for this Oscar race that we all did, probably wouldn't have watched it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I, I probably would never have watched it. It's just, yeah, you know. I think what made me go and see it the most is not, if if the Oscars death race wasn't there, was the hype, and that, like I said, that is a key problem. That you can't hype a film before the trailers were even out. It was hyped. It was ridiculous. You know. <laughs> No one hyped Engate. Like, no, obviously there were people that hyped Engate, but no one hyped it to the point that they did Joker before the trailer even came out. When the trailer came out, people were actually sort of sceptical about it. Um, but yeah, it's just it was ridiculous. And for me, I don't know. I just don't really like films that hype that much. Like, The Greatest Showman, that has so... It didn't have a hype before, but now it has taken over... Especially Britain. Ridiculous. Apparently Britain... Yeah. Like, America is not even as much as Britain. Like, apparently Brits love it so much, and I just don't get it. But there you go. You know it's owned by Disney now. Oh Christ! Bohemian Rhapsody so, is another one. Bohemian Rhapsody. Oh. No, I don't think they can do a sequel about Freddie Mercury when he dies. But wait, no, does but... he die at the end of Bohemian Rhapsody? They don't show that, do they? But no, they do. I think... They'll definitely do a sequel about The Greatest Showman. Now Disney owns it. And they'll so do a musical, musical that they well. can make thousands of money about. Yes, obviously they'll do a sequel. Yeah. Anyway, we'll move on. To Craig, what is your 71? <laughs> okay, my 71 is something that's hopefully less polarising. Well, I'm confident it's less polarising than Joker. I'm confident both of you probably like it. or I'm confident both of you definitely seen it. Inception. I have never uh, seen it. You've not seen Inception? I've, I've seen had Inception. the DVD for years and I've never opened the DVD. Oh, God, Inception is fantastic. Do you, my problem my with opinion. it was that I was... To, I, I will per- I will admit it, I found The Matrix so hard to understand, and I was told it's harder than The Matrix to understand, so I was like, I'll just avoid it at all costs. Inception's like a mindfuck, but it's a good mindfuck. Yeah, it's a pleasurable mindfuck. It's not It's not a rough fuck, it's a, It's one that you're like, yes, I'm glad. Will I, I get it? Now, will I get the narrative? I don't know. Most of it I think you would get, and then there's parts of it that I think you wouldn't. What I feel I like think, is, I think, what is the point of the narrative if you can't understand it? What is the point of having one? 
that's like what I felt like with the Matrix. What like this is I don't get why the Matrix is loved so by so many. What was the point of that if I, if not if it was hard to understand? I don't like the Matrix. I yeah. don't like the Matrix. I think the first one's the best one. The first one's kind of average, and they get worse. I'm not a massive fan either. I think the concept's good. The concept is good. The concept of the Matrix is really good, and obviously back then because it, it's not so shocking now. But back then, the idea that we're all living inside a computer, back when it came out, when computers were just like this new thing that everyone kind of started to get. Like, I mean, computers have been around for a long time before that, but these were becoming like this domestic thing, a bit like the TV. And suddenly, the idea of what if we're all in a computer, like, that's more impressive, I think, back then than now. It's okay, like, The Matrix is fine, but they get it worse. But Inception... You should watch Inception. Like, even if you didn't get The Matrix fully, like, The Matrix is a bit... I feel like The Matrix is a bit up its own arse at times. Mm. Like, yeah. It's kind of like, look at us, we're so cool, we're so different, we've got so many different ideas that you guys don't really get. Whereas uh, Christopher Nolan's kind of written this... I think he wrote it with his brother, did he write? I don't But it, he's kind of tried to be more, like, normal about it. And that's hard to explain, but... It's not like he's trying to do it to be pretentious. He's just trying to write a really good... And that's why I'm really looking forward to Tenant, uh, which is coming out, like you said, which hasn't been delayed, thank God. I'm um, really looking forward to that. Yeah. And uh, I've just realised, honourable mention, that I haven't put on my list, and I, I really do regret not putting this on there now that I've just remembered. Uh, Memento by Christopher Nolan. Memento? Uh, it's, yes. Yeah. Actually, hang on. No, I do have it on my list. That's a lie. I, that film, right, well, clearly I like it then if I thought it, I regret not. But we'll talk about that later. Right. Um, so, I'll, should I go ahead with my 71, the final one of this episode? Yeah. Um, the final one, okay, so my 71 is Fargo, Coen Brothers. Oh, oh. that's higher up my list. Yeah. Um, it's only low because... Uh, you know, I, I couldn't tell you. I just, I felt I, that the reason, the simple reason is, obviously, because I found the other seventy films a lot more enjoyable. But not to say that Fargo wasn't enjoyable. Just, um, it's quite short as well, actually. Fargo, isn't it? It's about one hour thirty, is it? Yeah, it's it's a shortish film. Yeah, um, it's very realistic though. Um, I I don't know what it is really about Fargo. There's something about it, and it's sort of. Yeah, I don't. I don't really. I can't put my finger. Do you got? What do you guys think? I can't put my finger on it. I really enjoyed it. I. I don't know. There's just the con. The whole concept of it, and you know, they made a TV series about it. The TV series, I believe, is not as good as the film that was. It's on Netflix, isn't it? Um, For us, anyway. For the UK, yeah. it's on Netflix. Um. I. I mean, I'm. I'm gonna be quite. I'm a bit biased because it's in my twenties up on my list. So, I'll tell you what I do like. I like the shift in location. How there's like that desolate, snowy, really rough location. Then there's that, you know, is it a car dealership or something that the character works at? Yeah. Or something like that. And it's quite a contrast in location. I guess that sort of makes it a lot more eerie when it is in the desolate, snowing, snowy areas. And But yeah, no. You two got this, but I felt that if if the film had like a feeling of a Coen Brothers film, so you watched it and you were like, "Oh, I, the Coen Brothers evidently directed this." Mm. Yeah, to an extent, but I think what makes Coen Brothers so interesting is is each of their films have a unique style. Like you can never really pinpoint down. Obviously, you can pinpoint down parts of them. Like more, more, more. What makes it obvious it's a Coen Brothers film is more of the themes and the actors that are in it. But I think each film that they do kind of has a unique style. Um, I mean, yeah, you, like obviously it does feel a bit like a Coen Brothers film. Like you, each one is kind of different in itself. Um, Fargo isn't on my list, though. And don't get me wrong, it is a very good film. But I think looking back at all these other films that I've put on here, I think... I don't prefer it as much. And I have a couple of Coen Brothers films on there. We've already talked about two. I think I have two others. Um, it's it is worth watch, obviously, if you, you both have put it on there. And I do agree that it is worth one of them ones that people do need to watch. But just didn't make my list. Is it an honorary mention it's, for you, though? Yeah, it's an honorary mention, but it's not like one of them that I'm like, oh, 
God, I can't believe I didn't put it on there. It's like, yeah, I do admit I did think about it and I didn't think actually don't deserve to go on there. Yeah. Well, that is then our all of our 80s to 71s done for this episode. Um, so that was quite a few good ones on, our, on there, I think. Avengers, Black Landsman, Once Upon a Time in the West. Uh, me. <laughs> I like it, right? It's, I, I, I think it is a good film anyway. Um, but yeah, no, um, so next episode, obviously, we will continue with this. We'll continue with our... Would, I actually have some quite interesting... I was looking just now, actually, at my uh, 70 to 61. Is that what it is? I believe so. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I have very interesting ones, actually. Uh, I have some interesting ones, too, yeah. I have some that have already appeared. That we study. Have you? Yeah. I, I have I'm some... One we study as well. I have two in there that we'll we study. didn't study, but we were told to watch because of things we studied. So, yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Um, so that will be next week. So join us every week, Wednesdays at 5pm, live on YouTube. Uh, so for the next episode. And we will see you then.